This is a slightly modified version of my APS 2022 talk. The work was conducted by myself at the University of Waterloo and the University of Göttingen, as well as Mark Matson at the University of Waterloo. Links to the APS talk, as well as our two papers on the topic, are in the description. Greetings. Today I'm going to be telling you about entropic segregation in athermal polymer blends due to conformational asymmetry. Blending polymers together provides a simple way of tailoring material properties. It can, however, also bring about complicated behavior that one needs to consider when processing materials. One such complication involves how polymers interact with surfaces. Chemically different polymers can obviously have different energetic interactions, but the presence of a surface can also affect polymer behavior through entropic means, that is, by changing the microstates that polymers can explore. It is established, for example, that in a blend of long and short polymers, the short ones tend to segregate to the surface. In this work, we consider polymers with the same volume but different statistical segment lengths in order to explore entropic segregation due to conformational asymmetry. To give you an intuition for why the stiffness of a polymer might matter to a surface, let's consider these two polymers, a stiff one in red and a flexible one in blue. Now I'll introduce an interface which intersects these two configurations. They're both now disallowed by the presence of the wall and thus removed from the ensemble. You might think that this would cause a depletion, but there are usually compensating short-range interactions that keep the blend density roughly constant. In order to keep the average concentration constant, we need to replace these configurations with something. In addition to the disallowed blue configuration, the wall also disallows this green one, which is a reflection of the blue configuration about the wall. We can construct a new configuration by simply reflecting the disallowed portion of the blue polymer about the wall. This configuration existed in the old ensemble, but it's simply counted again. It takes the place of both of the disallowed configurations and perfectly compensates for the loss in concentration. This argument was first made by Silberberg and essentially argues that we can think of a wall as simply a reflecting boundary, and it has no net effect. There are issues with this argument, more than I want to get into here, but one issue arises when we try to do the same thing with the stiff polymer. The reflection introduces a kink, which is very energetically unfavorable if there's a penalty to bending the polymer. We can splice configurations together to compensate for the lost ones in the case of the flexible polymer, but there's a large energetic penalty to doing so with the stiff polymer. This argument therefore concludes that there'll be an excess of flexible polymers at the surface. There is, however, another consideration. We also know that stiff polymers tend to pack together, forming pneumatic domains. If they're all packed together anyway, there's not much of an entropic penalty to them simply packing against the wall. So we might think that packing would lead to stiff polymers going to the wall. Now we have a problem, though. Trying to think about this problem heuristically led us to opposite conclusions. And clearly we need a better way to think about it. This is not a new problem. Experiment simulation and theory have all been done. These experiments see shorter statistical segments going to the wall in both polymer blends and copolymers. These theory papers find the same, and so does this paper using MD simulations. But if this was the end of the story, I wouldn't be talking about it. I want to particularly point out this paper by Wu et al, who calculated a profile for the excess flexible polymer at the wall. I'll be returning to this shortly. Not everyone agrees that shorter statistical segments should go to the wall. These theoretical calculations, for example, find no preference. These calculations and these simulations, on the other hand, find that the wall attracts the longer statistical segments. The literature seems a little confused. You might argue that experiment is king. If your simulations or calculations disagree with experiments, then they're simply wrong. But this is a little naive. Experiments use real molecules with real complicated interactions. It's difficult to isolate just the entropic effects, which can be subtle, from the enthalpic effects, which might alter the preference. So how about simulations? Well, there's disagreement between different simulations. The ones at the bottom argue that these theories did not consider packing effects, like in our second heuristic. But then why do they disagree with the MD simulations? This is where our work comes in. I'll be telling you about simulations that we conducted which might help clear things up. The first work that I'll be showing you simulates a tangent sphere model using Monte Carlo. In each simulation, all polymers have the same length and the same volume. The unit length in our system is set to the diameter of a bead. For half of the polymers, we impose a bending energy which is proportional to the dot product between adjacent bond vectors. The strength of the bond energy is given by kappa. The other half of the polymers have no penalty to bending. Introducing a wall involves simulating a system that looks like this. There's a hard barrier at either end in the xy-plane, and z gives the distance from that barrier. 
I use a long system because I want to make sure any surface effects don't propagate from one wall to the other. I'm considering surface effects, not confinement effects. I also choose lengths in the x and y dimensions such that I don't get any significant finite size effects. Calculating the average concentrations of stiff and flexible polymers yields a result like this. The layer of beads at the wall has equal amounts of beads from stiff and flexible polymers, but there's a longer range preference for flexible polymers near the wall. The difference between stiff and flexible polymer concentrations looks like this. It compares well with the prediction by Wu et al. This curve was calculated for Gaussian chains, but we expect it to be universal, in the sense that it describes the behavior universal to polymeric systems. It does not capture the behavior right next to the wall, which is likely model dependent and specific to our tangent sphere model, but the longer range behavior compares very well. Expanding this data to include more bending energies, we continue to see good agreement. The prediction does better for weak bending energies as we would expect. If we repeat these calculations for a variety of polymer lengths, we see that n equals 40 was not special. The prediction continues to do well for all n that we've tested. A thorough exploration is difficult with our tangent sphere model due to the computational resources required. It's particularly difficult to go to high densities and large bending energies. We therefore turn to a lattice model. We choose an FCC lattice because the large number of nearest neighbors helps reduce the lattice effects, but we can still go to 80% occupancy while still simulating long times. We're also able to explore larger bending energies, as you're about to see. Looking once again at the concentration of stiff and flexible polymers next to a wall, we see an excess of flexible polymers. This time, the flexible excess extends right up to the wall. As previously noted, the behavior at the very surface is not expected to be universal, but the overall behavior, this excess further to the wall, once again agrees very well with the curve predicted by Wu et al. As we go to higher bending energies, however, we notice a different behavior. The stiff polymers start to go to the surface. Increasing the bending energy just a little bit more, the amplitude and the extent of the excess grows. Now the surface is almost pure stiff polymer, and there's quite a large excess of stiff polymers at the surface. To better understand this, we've plotted the excess at the wall as a function of the bending energy kappa. At kappa equals zero, there's obviously no excess, the polymers are the same. Increasing kappa leads to a flexible excess up to a point, where the preference flips and quickly changes to a strong preference for stiff polymers. To understand this further, I've plotted the order parameter of the stiff polymers in the surface layer. At low kappa, where there's a flexible excess, the biaxial order parameter is equal to three times the nomadic order parameter, that is, p over three equals s. This indicates biaxial order at the surface. The stiff polymers preferentially align with the wall, but have no preference in the xy plane. They just tend to be parallel with the wall, but not necessarily to each other. When the stiff polymer excess kicks in, the biaxial order parameter drops to zero, and the pneumatic order parameter increases. This is the onset of pneumatic ordering at the interface. The stiff polymers are pointing parallel to the wall, but have broken the rotational symmetry in the xy plane, and are now aligned with each other. Another way of saying this is that packing effects have set in. For low bending energies, there's a flexible excess of the wall, and packing is irrelevant, because polymers are too flexible. At higher bending energies, packing becomes relevant, and there's a surface ordering transition where stiff polymers pack against the wall. Entropy has subtle but important effects on the behavior of polymers near surfaces, and questions remain open about how exactly entropic effects alter the behavior near these surfaces. To help address these questions, we've conducted off- and on-lattice Monte Carlo simulations of 50-50 polymer blends of stiff and flexible polymers near a surface. We found that at low bending energies, there's a preference for flexible polymers, which is well described by the prediction of Wu et al. At higher bending energies, there's a surface ordering transition and a preference for stiffer polymers kicks in. For a more thorough analysis, along with a description of how this work helps resolve some disagreements in the literature, I invite you to check out the two papers referenced on the slide. Thanks for listening. This ends the talk that I gave at APS, but I would also like to add two things, just FYI. The first thing is that I've done some stiff flexible mixture simulations in lamps, and I see flexible excess at the surface that also follows the curve predicted by Wu et al. This adds evidence that the behavior is indeed universal. We didn't mention it in the paper or show it here because we didn't consider the data to be publication quality. Equilibration just took prohibitively long. I think the swap move in our Monte Carlo simulations really helps, so if anyone watching knows how to add MC moves into lamps, that would be really useful. 
The other thing is that I have qualitatively reproduced the other behavior seen in the lattice simulations using the tangent sphere model. That is, at higher bending energies, the tangent sphere model also exhibits a surface ordering transition as well as the phase segregation pictured at the very beginning, and discussed in the 2021 paper. The LAMP simulations also show these behaviors. I haven't done a systematic analysis because the tangent sphere model is slower, and as I mentioned, my LAMP simulations took too long to equilibrate. By the way, if you want to use the tangent sphere code for anything, feel free. It's in the supplementary material for the 2022 paper and linked in the description. It was written as for-purpose code, and the decision to publish it was last minute at the urging of a referee, so it may not be super user-friendly, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you do end up using it, I just ask that you reference our 2022 paper, and have fun!